Scientists from NASA, they've used space radar technology to discover the, well, the big problem here that is going on. New York City is sinking into the abyss. It's happening faster than what we realized. And it took NASA to tell us all that um, actually this is something we should be very concerned about. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. And thank you to our Patreon supporters and YouTube members for supporting the channel. So what is going on here? And why has it taken NASA to tell us this? Now, I've got to admit that when I was in New York, I think it was about 12 years ago, I thought it was the most amazing city on Earth. And at that point in time, I had done a lot of traveling and travel for a couple of years. So I'd seen a lot of different cities and some of them were amazing, but I thought New York was the most amazing city. And I still commit to that idea. I still think it's the most amazing city on Earth. So I'm hoping it doesn't sink into the ocean because it appears as though that is actually possible. Now, I'm not saying all of New York is going to suddenly sink in tomorrow, but parts of New York are sinking faster than others. NASA has uncovered hidden vertical motion. Areas of New York City are sinking. However, some of them are rising. Scientists using space-based radar found that land in New York City is sinking at varying rates due to human and natural factors. But bizarrely, some spots are actually rising. Parts of New York City metropolitan area, of course, um, are being affected differently. These factors that are affecting these areas range from land use practices to long lost glaciers, scientists have found. So long lost glaciers affected the development of the land in this area. So some of it is not as stable as what people thought it was, particularly the area under Trump Tower. Now, apparently the Trump Tower is about to sink into the ocean and um, no one cares. Now I'm joking, the Trump Tower is not about to sink in the ocean, but who knows, maybe it could. While the elevation changes in New York City seem relatively small, fractions of inches per year, add all those up and they can start to look problematic. Now they can also enhance or diminish flood risks linked to sea level rise. The new study was published on the 27th of September in Science Advances by a team of researchers from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California and Rutgers University in New Jersey. And no one paid any notice of this study at all. Maybe they should. I mean, property prices are extremely high in New York City and uh, I don't know how confident I'd feel buying a property there if I didn't know whether or not it was one of the areas that was rising or sinking. The team analyzed upward and downward vertical land motion, also known as uplift and subsidence, across the metropolitan area from 2016 to 2023 using a remote sensing technique called Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, or INSAR. The technique combines two or more 3D observations of the same region to reveal surface motion or topography. So what factors actually are influencing land motion in this area? Much of the motion they observed occurred in areas where prior modifications to the Earth's surface, such as land reclamation and the construction of landfills, made the ground looser and more compressible beneath subsequent buildings. Some of the motion is also caused by natural processes dating back thousands of years to the most recent ice age. About 24,000 years ago, a huge ice sheet spread across most of New England and a wall of ice more than a mile high covered what is today Albany in upstate New York. SciTech Daily says that Earth's mantle, somewhat like a flexed mattress, has been slowly readjusting ever since. New York City, which sits on land that was raised just outside the edge of the ice sheet, is now sinking back down. The scientists found that on average, the metropolitan area subsided by around 0.06 inches or 1.6 millimeters every single year, about the same amount that a toenail grows in a month. Using the radars on the ESA or the European Space Agency, Sentinel-1 satellites, along with advanced data processing techniques, they mapped the motion in detail. They pinpointed neighborhoods and landmarks down to an airport runway and tennis stadium that are subsiding more rapidly than the average. So that average of 1.6 millimeters, in some places, it's a lot more. I think it's probably worth knowing where those places are. That's the whole point of this study. 
We produce such a detailed map of vertical land motion in the New York City area that there are features popping out that haven't been noticed before, said lead author Brett Buzanga, a postdoctoral researcher at IPL. A scientist and lead investigator of the project said that tracking local elevation changes and relative sea level can be important for flood mapping and planning purposes. This is especially critical as Earth's changing climate pushes oceans higher around the world leading to more frequent nuisance flood events and exacerbating destructive storm surges. So there's some real hot spots here. There's some problem spots that people should probably be aware of. Where are they? The team identified two noticeable hot spots of subsidence co-located with landfills in Queens. One runway at LaGuardia Airport is subsiding at a rate of well, nearly 0.2 inches per year. So nearly f about four millimeters per year. If you add that up over the course of 20 years, it becomes quite a lot, right? The scientists noted that the airport is undergoing an $8 billion renovation designed in part to alleviate flooding from the rising waters of the Atlantic Ocean. So basically, they're trying to fix the problem that uh, the Atlantic Ocean is going to flood the airport. But at the same time, this airport is sinking as a result. They also identified an Arthur Ashe Stadium, which is sinking at a rate of 0.2 inches or 5 millimeters per year and required construction of a lightweight roof during renovation to reduce its heaviness and amount of substance. Basically, it was sinking quicker because it was too heavy. Uh, this is a bit of a scary idea. 5 millimeters per year. What are you looking at? 10 years. That's 50 millimeters. 20 years, 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters of sinking. That's a a bit of a challenge when you've got the ocean rising at the same time. Other substance hotspots include the southern portion of Governors Island built on 38 million square feet or 3.5 million cubic meters of rocks and dirt from early 20th century subway excavations, as well as sites near the ocean in Brooklyn's Coney Island and Averne by the sea in Queens that were built on artificial landfill. Similar levels of subsidence were observed beneath Route 440 and Interstate 78 in suburban New Jersey, which traverse historic field locations, and in Rikers Island, expanded to its present size by landfilling. Basically, you don't really want to live on landfill. That's my takeaway here. The scientists found previously unidentified uplift in East Williamsburg, Brooklyn, rising by 1.6 millimeters per year, and in Woodside, Queens, which rose by 0.3 inches or 7 millimeters per year seven millimeters per year that's staggering so one of the other reasons this is happening the scientists said is they found that groundwater pumping and injection wells have been used to treat polluted water and they've played a role however the scientists said that cities like new york which are investing in coastal defenses and infrastructure in the face of sea level rise will benefit from high resolution estimates of land motion um, to see exactly what is going on so what's going to happen in the future? How will, will this be solved or will New York City just eventually sink into the abyss? Well, if you think about it, fast forward, say, 10,000 years from now, I think New York City probably will mostly sink into the ocean. The JPL-led OPERA, or O-P-E-R-A, Observational Products for End Users from Remote Sensing Analysis Project will detail surface displacement across North America in a future data product. So NASA's technology is doing most of this work. NASA Indian Space Research Organization Synthetic Aperture Radar Mission will launch in 2024 and information from this mission will help scientists monitor vertical land motion along with other changes connected to natural hazards. But if you want to know more about this, it's worth looking into it. If you're about to buy property in New York, I'd be waiting to check that your area isn't subsiding into the abyss at a rate of five or more millimeters every single year. Because you add all that up, that's that's a lot of sinking. Remember, there's been cities in the world that have sunk into nothing and no longer exist. In fact, it's happened in a few different cities over the past 20 years. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.